Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back uh, with an extended Louis B. Free radio show, Brain Food from the Heartland today. And I am thrilled to the guests that I have. And, and, and I've got to tell you, Lena Melman is with me. And I am, you are such a beautiful lady, by the way. You are such a, a wonderful lady uh, and, and so courageous in what you do. And again, I, am, I reached out to you and I, I, I'm truly honored that you made time to come on. You, you certainly, are, your, your work is nothing short of courageous and heroic. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm truly, I could go on and on, but I won't, I'm truly honored that you agreed. Well, to thank you. I'm really delighted to be here. I think you have a wonderful show. And I'm very impressed by the variety and range and really the topics that you cover on your show. Well, I'm honored that you're part of that now. And I, I, hope, it's be, I hope it's the beginning of a wonderful relationship because <laughs> your, your work, let's talk about you. Tell us about yourself, about your background pre-liberate art. Right. Well, I am a 20-year veteran of the entertainment industry. I started my career as an entertainment lawyer. I was working at Columbia Pictures Television, which has now become Sony. After that, I went to CBS, and I worked in the business affairs department. And after that, I transferred into their uh, creative department and where I worked as like a buyer in, in what they refer to as development, which is the development of new projects. After that, I went to Warner Brothers and Paramount before becoming an independent producer and then ultimately a writer producer. And I have um, became involved in combating the cultural BDS movement, uh, the cultural boycott movement against the state of Israel in 2011. And that is what I've done ever since. Well, uh, you went, wanted to be an entertainment, you became an entertainment lawyer. Can you tell me a little bit more about at that time? What, what was that about? What well, was, you know, actually, it was probably one of my least favorite jobs. <laughs> it was like it had this horrible combination of being both difficult and boring. So, you know, you were, oh, my gosh, I, I, I did a lot of contract drafting, a lot of rights searches because, you know, Columbia had a huge library and they were always looking to kind of redevelop certain concepts. So, you know, I, I walked I wanted to do something different. It was really a lot of drudge work. And then I thought, oh, you know, I'd really like to be in business affairs because you're on the phone all day and there's a lot of contact. And then that job, you know, was definitely more active, but it was also um, very combative. So, I, you know, because you're negotiating all day long. So, and then I was at CBS and I was here I, and I shared a, a wall with someone in the creative department who actually later went on to be uh, Robert De Niro's partner. But anyway, and when I would hear coming through the wall with these peals of laughter and after their meeting, they would be like hugging and kissing. So I said to myself, I'm gonna work there. <laughs> so that's what I did. And and then everything took off after that. I, I really found my home there. And you, you, you loved that aspect of it, correct? I loved it. I loved uh, working uh, with creative people. I spent most of my time uh, working with writers. And I loved it. And directors, uh, creative executives. It's a really wonderful bonding experience to start with, a, with an idea and watch that blossom and ultimately become something very real with, uh, you know, a television series or a movie on, uh, on the air. It's wonderful. That's got to be incredible. Then finally see it like there. Yes, and yes. Wow. And the collaboration is great. It's, you know, I, 
it's one of those things where you uh, oftentimes you work on location when you're at productions, but there's a real bond that forms. It's kind of like all these people become your high school friends in, in as much as, you know, you might not see each other very often, but when the experience you had together was so intense that when you do see each other, it's, you know, yeah. like you've never been apart. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I want to, um, so again, the entertainment, again, I, I want to get into your work today, but going into that and wanting to be a lawyer, I mean, it's a, a lot of work. Growing up was like what for you? And do you mind? Oh, you know, I actually had, uh, you know, uh, a nice childhood. I grew, grew up in Los Angeles and I grew up actually around the entertainment business. My best friend in junior high and high school, her dad was a producer. I think he produced, I don't know, some spelling show. I, I want to say the love boat, but I could be wrong. Oh. So, you know, so I, I grew up and then I went to UCLA and UCLA Law School. But, you know, my passion was always um, kind of storytelling. And I didn't realize that until... Uh, it came to fruition, you know, after I went through all those jobs and I finally got into the creative end of the business. But, but you found your path. Talk with us about Liberate Art. And, and again, I want to say that it was Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. It was Lori Cardoza Moore. And I saw you interviewed and I was in tears at uh, oh, thank uh, you. knowing that you're out there doing what you're doing, fighting against, ba battling a, a tremendous foe, if you will, uh, yeah. tremendous evil, if you yeah. will. How did that, tell me a little bit about that, how that came about. Well, you know, I, if you don't mind, I thought maybe we could start by c telling people about the boycott, divestment, and sanctions Please. campaign against Israel, because not a lot of people, um, you know, are that familiar with the term. They're very familiar, whether they realize it or not, uh, uh, with the impact of this campaign. But the uh, uh, boycott, divestment, and sanctions campaign typically goes by, or often goes by its acronym, which is BDS. And it is a campaign to delegitimize and ultimately destroy Israel. It plays out in several different um, aspects. One of them, it, the SBDS stands for sanctions. And that refers to international sanctions that are placed against Israel, normally in the UN. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact numbers, but in 2018, I think it is, um, there were a total of 22 uh, uh, resolutions issuing sanctions against countries. Well, all but four of them were against Israel. And when you're looking at what's going on in the world, it's preposterous. Then there's the divestment campaign. That's what the D stands for. And that's an attempt to get institutions like pension funds and university uh, 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 investments uh, to, they're trying to get them to divest from Israel, to give up any investments in their financial holdings that are connected to Israel. That has to do with Israeli companies, but also businesses that do business with Israel. And then there's the boycott. And that there, there is an academic boycott, uh, economic boycott, a sports boycott, and a cultural boycott. And all of these attempt to isolate and reject Israel. So my area of expertise is the cultural boycott. And the cultural boycott plays out in the entertainment industry. It's the attempt by these groups to get international artists to boycott Israel and to get international venues to boycott Israeli artists. 